In this video, I'm going to show you how to play a few scales on this instrument, the tin whistle, or as it's sometimes called, the penny whistle. Now, this tin whistle is in D, and most of them are. You can actually get them in any key, but most of them tend to be in D because most of the Irish tunes are in D, or G, or A. So I'm going to show you how to play the scales that go with those keys. So first things first, a D major scale. Sounds like this. Now, I never had a whistle lesson in my entire life. Picked it all up by ear, which means I also picked up a few bad habits. One of which is leaving my little finger down. And it's been told to me by many whistle players that you should try and avoid that. You can actually see the little grime mark because I've had my finger down there for so long. So if you can, try and play this scale without that little finger down. And it would look like this. By the time you get up top, obviously, you have to put it down, which is probably where my problem began. So when you get to that high D, you probably notice I lift my little finger up. That's very important. You can still get the high D without lifting it up, but did you hear me squeak? That's what we're trying to avoid. When you leave all your fingers down on that high D, you're more, you're more likely to squawk and make sounds you don't wanna make, okay? So let's try the D major scale. Three and. So that's the D major scale. And then to get the upper octave, you would just blow harder. I don't want to blow out my microphone. So that's all there is to it for a D major scale. Another scale that we use is G. Now, for the G scale, we're going to have to do what's called half holing because there is no C sharp, this note, right? Like we just had in the previous scale. It's a C natural. So to get that C, we have to half hole by putting these two fingers down and lifting up our first finger. So just like our D, but we're going to lose the right hand. So it sounds like in context, that sounds like. Okay, so that is the best way to play a C natural on this instrument. There is another way you can do it. Um, this is a true half hole where we're literally covering half the hole with our finger. You could go. But I tend to not recommend that, especially in the lower octave. When you get up into the higher octave, it works really well because you actually can't do a, a half hole like this on the higher octave. So at the risk of blowing out my microphone, it would sound like I think it was okay. Um, but to get that high C, you have to bend your finger a little bit. But let's start back with the G in the lower octave. Three, four. Descending. Okay, so the last scale by the way, both of the scales I just played are the same notes for B minor, the relative minor of D, and E minor, the relative minor of G. So let me just show you that real quick. So if you remember our D scale, if we were to start those notes on a B using the exact same notes and keep going up the scale, we have B minor. Right, exact same notes. Same is true if we start on an E with our G scale. So you know, really the only thing that's changing here is the C, this C. But we're gonna start on an E and now we have E minor. Okay, so just by changing one finger opens up four scales, right? Um, well, we have four scales in total between uh, our C natural and our C sharp, which is no fingers on the instrument. I'm kind of lose my instrument here. Uh, and so the very last scale I was about to do is A. Now, A has a G sharp in it, so it's a little trickier to get this because then you have to ha you have to half hole. Um, so an A sounds like this. You noticed my little uh, my third finger to get that G sharp. 
So that is for a true A major. And for that reason, a lot of whistle players and flute players tend to shy away from A tunes because of this pesky G sharp. It's just hard to get it when you're going up to speed. You'll find that a lot of tunes, however, are an A modal. So A modal is all those notes, but with a G natural. So that sounds like descending. So a lot of tunes are in this modal mixolydian, if you know anything about modes, if you don't, don't worry about it. Uh, but there, a lot of them are in the mixolydian mode, which means they have that flat seven instead of and so that's also true of D. We get a lot of tunes in this uh, tonality. Right? Instead of... So that would be called D modal. And in a session, you're likely to hear people yell out D modal or A modal or G modal heaven forbid, but that's what that means is a flat seven. So those are the scales that are most commonly used on the 10 whistle. So with just six holes, uh, we can play a lot of music, a lot of scales. So I hope that helped.